<laughs> Good morning, Ben friends. How we doing? How we doing this morning? Uh, thanks for asking about my thumb. All better. It was better by like Friday afternoon, so like 24 hours ish. It was uh, hurting, and then it just got progressively better, and then it just stopped. So I kind of figured out that's what it was. Yes, yeah, Slumber, and there he is. That's what I was giggling at. I was like, I started a little bit late, like a minute. And then I let the intro run like a minute longer than I normally do. So I was giggling, but for like no reason other than me just like goofing off on the background. <laughs> so hi, good morning. Oh, let's catch up on these subs. Nib Wars, 47 months of subbing. Let's go. The Mongoose, 24 months of subbing. Sweet. Corinne B, 53 months of subbing. Y'all rule. Thank you so much. I forgot about your thumb because I broke my big toe. Ouch. That sounds terrible. And... You should always uh, forget about me and worry about you. Like psh, my thumb, please. I hope your uh, hope your toe's okay. Hope your toe is okay. Ivan Neo with the hundred biddies. Thank you so much. Quality scenes only around here. Quality scenes only around here. I'm always punctual at nine fifty nine. So the the routine is you. I start the stream at nine fifty seven, and then go live at ten o'clock because Twitch does usually about three minutes of ads before i glyph also caught me while i was late today i did put i was doing an instagram i was in i was pinfluencing <laughs> i was like i wanted to take that picture because i only did that for you glyph because um i might want to give away that postcard later but i wanted to take a picture of it first and i was like well i took the picture let me put it on instagram so <sighs> so there we go it's the last toe I had that I hadn't broken yet. That seems like a story. Like I, wow, that that's a, wow. <laughs> All for a good photo of a new pin. Well, well, you now you got to tell me the pin. Inked a pin with diamond, Syrah, damn, it's good. How is that for me? Well, not really for you, but for everybody. I'm doing something for you later. I sent the email with all of our all of our deets. Dragon drawer, seventeen months of seven. Let's go. Thank you, Dragon Draw. Appreciate you. Miss G's Crafties, enjoy your lurking. I love that animated heart. That is sick. Whose is that? Trinac. That is cool. I like that one a lot. That is super cool. I'm blind, Brad. My mom used to move the furniture around when I was younger, and I break my toes not seeing it without glasses. Dang. I had no idea. That's crazy. That's crazy. <clears throat> How did you find the F1? pretty good it was okay like i watched the whole thing it was it was good i watched the um um i think i watched everything except the qualifying like i watched the sprint and watched the race oh i did watch this did i watch qualifying? i don't know it was okay the new pin is the platinum 3776 chai latte nice is that the the heart one the new heart one right like with the, the in the in the top the top finial thing. If y'all have a link, you can throw that up there. I heart books. 30 months of subbing. Let's go. Hope you're doing well. Worth it. The new heart one. I, I think I saw it like in passing, but I haven't like looked, looked at it. If y'all have, if y'all want to throw a link in there, I'll take a look at it. <clears throat> Michelle BT. Loving my Sheba retro with my new plotter mini six. Let's go. Speaking of uh, Sheba's, my friend Susan, who collaborated with me on that, has a new project up. I'll have to see if I can get the uh, get the link up uh, for that. I saw that this morning <clears throat> on the Mastodon. I retooted it. I like tooting. EF Sig by FC is fun, man. That's one of my favorite nibs. Like it's just good. Like it fits. Yeah. Like it's everything that I want. Whoa. The alerts were acting funny. <clears throat> Sailor Ripple Blue Ebonite is awesome. Yeah. We're all going to Miami in two weeks for F1. Yeah, live Pin Attic podcast there. <clears throat> oh, is this what y'all are sending me here? Okay, here we go. Nice. That's really pretty. I like those. I like... What is it about those muted colors that kind of get me sometimes? Like, I like my rose creme, Twisby. I like, like, the gray. Twisby was very good. Um, the gray Lamy Safari I have is very good with, like, the rose gold trim, the Atoya Lamy Safari. 
Um, yeah, like, I don't know. It's something about these these colors. Yeah, that's a good looking pen. I, I think I like this one better than the black one. When the black one was good too. Coffee is the hot new things in pens and inks this year. Now that you say that, it starts to come together a little bit, right? You start to see a little bit, a uh, little bit of uh, that going on there. So yeah, it's really good. Now give me the good coffee inks. The good coffee inks are are the challenge. So like my Sailor um, uh, Fika Tea Time coffee is my favorite brown ink and it's so limited and I just can't get it. That one I buy another one. Namiki Winter Vlad with 34 months and a derogatory uh, representation uh, of our likes and dislikes. It represents a desire to be dull and unexciting. I can love that pen while I can also love this pen, right? So you never know. You just never know. You just never know. We love all the things here. Um, this alert box thing is messing me up. <clears throat> so thank you for 34 months of subbing. And we like our dull, boring pens as much as we like our fancy, fancy pens. Am I talking about pen cases today? A little bit, a little bit. We're going to unbox something um, that I will see. Sailor 373 matches the chai latte pen perfectly. I haven't looked at that one. Does that one have the crystals in the finial? Yeah, so it's got the, um, whoops. It's got the little uh, things up here in the finials, so yeah. And I think a lot of them, and then they have like, a, they do some metal stamp, metal stamp hearts that go like mix in the crystals. I'm a strange gay that I don't like that pink pen. <laughs> that seems, I mean, it's, it's a loud pink pen. <clears throat> Naper Villain, 41 months of subbing. Let's go. Appreciate you, Naper Villain. <clears throat> All right, so yeah, we will, uh, my friend I helped enable just picked up the Colorverse Coffee Break ink. I should probably try that one. Oh yeah, we should look at that Edison pen. Uh, let me pull that one up. I think I can get that one. Yeah, I haven't tried all those. I haven't tried as many brown inks. I am I'm very I'm a very tentative brown ink explorer. Cafe Crema, I know. Like I I just feel like I'm gonna be disappointed. Um so I just put up the Edison pen homepage. If you want to play along at home, there it is. So they announced a new pen. So the idea here whoa, hey, click the link. Um the idea here, so this is the Jameson, um, and it's another pen model built with the lip gloss and lattes. You're the brown ink queen. So my favorite is Sailor Fika Tea Time Coffee. So if you have a match to that, that's what I need to know. Um, so the idea here was to use the number eight nib. What num What nibs are they using? Medium size flat top still has room for a large eight size nib. So it's like bigger than the Beaumont. Oh, they did some wild colors in these. Fine, medium, and broad, 325. I like them. I'm not a huge cat band guy. I like all these colors. I think the two on the outside are my favorite and the orangey yellow pink one in the middle, I think probably just because of the gold trim. I don't like the gold trim with that pen, but I like the material. I like all these materials. What nib is this? Did have someone know what nib this is? Who makes the nib? That's what I'm trying to figure out. You love a good cap band? Yeah, I'm, I guess, I think I'm generally no cap band. Like, I don't, I don't know, it just, it depends. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I have less pens with like the fancy cat bands. I think these are really pretty. The, the cat band works with this pen though, is what I'm saying. But yeah, what nib is this? All right, if this has music, I'm gonna stop it, we'll see. 
Oh, never mind. Rip. This is a 12 minute video, right? <laughs> We're not watching that. <laughs> so, um, not that I, I don't care who makes the nib. I'm just curious. Used to get them from Magna. Gotcha. But they're, um, I don't know if you could see it, but they're very, they just have like the logo on them. They're playing with the logo on it, which I think looks good. So I don't know. I would try this pen for sure. I think being leaked all over by a toe. Oh, I'm catching up on something. You don't get the nib, the big nib appeal. I didn't, uh, I can't, I'm with you, re-wizzles in general. Um, I have tried a couple of like the, um, the Jinhao number eights and like an extra fine. I was like, oh, that is pretty good. Magna Carta makes the nib. It's their equivalent of a Bach number eight. So it's like a Bach. Okay. Nice. I need to try those. Like I haven't tried those. Uh, this Magna Carta one. <clears throat> so yeah, I I like this. I I would like to review this pen one day. God. This one looks the the dark one looks like my Cosmos one, but I think I would have to go for this one right here. I kind of like that full full on wildness. Right and last front of the show, you did ask my feelings about the. Did you ask my feelings about the use of meteorite in other areas of the luxury industry? Probably. I can go back and check. I can look at that tonight and and kind of discuss that a little bit. Brad, I posted two of the new poorly controlled mirrors on my materials this morning. Let me check. Because um, I saw those. I did, I did have a question about the question I asked you, if that makes sense. <laughs> That's PM4? Man, that looks... Why don't I, more pins should be made like that. I like that one. Uh, but yeah, that is in the show notes, uh, Glyph. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, hey, while I'm looking this up, y'all go. Um, yeah, I, I did that, Glyph, because... Um, of the first question that I wanted to elaborate on. So me and Glyph are doing friend of the show tonight. So y'all go do this. I'm gonna look this up. So I'm giving away the Aurorealis ink. Uh, whoops, I moved the camera. Uh, on the blog, so y'all go look at that. So yeah, um, I haven't tested the ink out. I don't know if I want to. I mean, it looks cool. Like, it's a nice dark shimmer ink. This is more funny about the story. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Glyph. Um, I definitely don't plan on doing the full rapid fire, for sure. Since we've already covered it. But I wanted to talk about, like, new stuff since we last talked. All right, uh, Bart. Oh, this is one. Sheesh. All right, if y'all haven't seen these, here's this link. So I got to see some of these. Um, I got to see some of these materials at the Atlanta pen show, but not in the pens. Dang. Fountain pen news. Your shown pocket six was stolen. That sucks. Brad, have you been to the post office? I did not go yesterday, so I'm gonna have to try to go by there. So no, I have not gotten the dice. Uh, my wife took my mail, and I didn't get the, um, I didn't give her the key to check the box. So, uh, yeah, th no, that's perfect, Glyph. I figure we we're good to just riff. So what is this called? Saturn Storm. That's kind of a crazy material. I really like that one. You see the orange resin from Brooks that's got like fire opals colors in it. No, send me that one. I know the post office will give you a second key. Oh, I know, but my wife would have to ask them. And she, she don't want to do all that. Yeah, when I forget my key, I just tell them to grab my stuff. But they don't know her like they know me. So, yeah. I definitely know. So, yeah, that looks great. I like the polish on this. That just looks good. What's the other one? I'm right next to it. Uh, abstract Law Florian. I don't know what that means, but this is a wild. Dang. I like these materials. This is a wild one. I like that. 
I got the Prometheus pin from the giveaway. Very strange using the Edelstein cartridge is weird because the drying doesn't work best when you first sync it. True. Oh, well, I'm glad you got it, Cool Penguino. It is a weird pin. I kind of like it. Like, it's it's weird in a cool way. Lothlorien's a token thing. Yeah, is it bad that I haven't really watched Lord of the Rings or any read any of the books or any of that stuff, even though, like, I know I'd like them? <laughs> Talking about showing you apologizing on his IG for being behind with the mails. That's so sweet. Man, it's easy to get behind real quick. <laughs> Brian A. Knight, 15 months of subbing. Let's go. Thank you so much, Brian. Hope you're doing well. So, yeah, these are looking amazing. And this is Bart's favorite. At least what he told me, his favorite material. And it's pretty sick. Carolina agate. It's just crazy. I haven't read any Tolkien's. Sorry. Rip me. Do y'all see these? Do y'all see this screen? Not being full on there? Okay, fire up. I'm gonna look at that. How's your thumb? All better. So it lasted about a day. So like by Friday afternoon, it was pretty much, I could barely feel it anymore. So it was a weird thing, but, um, so do y'all, let me ask you something, chat. When you're looking at this screen over here on this side, do you see blank space or am I filling your screen? Because I see something weird on, on my thing. Or is this like the edge of your computer screen? I'm just curious. I bet you had a trap nerve, maybe. Maybe. It's all good. It's all good now. I have, I'll have watched Celery Man transcribe plenty of it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No blank space for me? Okay. So you just see the comments. Everything looks good. Okay. I'm just seeing something weird when I look at my software. Okay. My video is at the edge. That's what I'm asking. So thank you. Yeesh. Oh, man. It, so what I like about this type of pen... So I get my wild colors right. I love like this color and I get this translucent hit in there. I like translucency. I, I don't know, I say this and I, I, I like everything. Some of the times I really like the depth of like some of the um, like solids, some like the really, really solids and the translucency, like that mixture. Um, what's the one you did for Bart Star or that you do regularly, Star Stormy Koi? That's the one with like the gray solid and the blue translucent. Oh, Glyph, we could, I didn't even have to send show notes. So, and like I booked us an hour and I was like, well, I normally try to keep these at like 30 minutes, but there's, there's no keeping Glyph uh, at bay. <laughs> like Beaumont Fireball. Yeah, this is sick. Is there anything other than gold trim you dislike? I don't dislike gold trim. I mean, like literally, like I like gold trim on the right pen. I don't dislike gold trim at all. The whole dislike gold trim thing came from um, like traditional black and gold pens that when we didn't have as many options, you know, even before I was in fountain pens, like everyone just made the black, black pen with the gold nib, right? That's what I'm talking about when I talk about boring gold trim otherwise gold trim is fine like i like especially rose gold like i have a rose gold leonardo and rose gold twisby so <clears throat> is there anything so there's lots of things i dislike in moderation <laughs> so the bigger the pen the less chance there is i'm gonna like it but guess what i have some giant pens that i love right it just depends depends get it Pins. All right, Fire Opal, sick. I probably need a, a, a Fire Opal. Uh, yes, I've seen the Montegrappa Frankenstein. I'm saving that for the podcast tomorrow. So we did. We talked about it a little bit last week and how disappointed Ree Wizzles is. It's very important that Ree Wizzles uh, is happy with this pen. They are not happy with this pen whatsoever. So I'm going to keep that in mind. <clears throat> So yeah, um, I like that 
Fire Opal Brooks. Probably gonna have to get something. <laughs> Creepy, you saying depends so slow, just saying don't do it. You know, if you tell me not to do something, I'm like, again, a 12 year old at heart, Slumberland Studio, you know this. If you tell me not to do something, I'm probably gonna do it more. <laughs> you know, one could say it depends whether I'll do it again or not. Just saying. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> You've known me long enough. <laughs> okay, chat. <clears throat> Let's do a giveaway before we got in it. Uh, <laughs> just like my dog, yeah. Uh, don't touch the power button. I, I, you don't need me to touch the power button. Like, you never th give us Frankie abs. Give us something with Zaz. Yeah. So it's so rewizzles. I haven't totally audited the imagery. I'm kind of trying to save it. But you're saying it's not enough. It's not wild enough. Is that is that what I'm getting? Is like you went you went here, Montegrappa. I needed you out here, right? Oh, Andy P, 25 months of subbing. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Don't give you a big hug. I'm a hugger, so all hugs are allowed. I said the word moist on our podcast and it shivers down Brad's spine. Now, I, that I will try not to do that on purpose. <laughs> I mean, I said it quickly in passing there. I'm not going to repeat that. These alerts are hilarious. They are not uh, They are not ending. It should be a pin that zaps you when you pick it up. All right, so let's do a giveaway. I have a couple small packages um, that I want to open. Uh, one was some vintage pencils that my friend Michael sent me, who, uh, if y'all know Michael Harris, he's the one who helped lead the design process for the Panatic Watch. Shout out, Michael. Um, and then I have something else I'm gonna I want to open for y'all and get your opinions on. So we'll check. And I I, I haven't seen it in pictures yet. Kind of lame steampunky stuff should be may may way more over the top. Okay, cool. That makes sense. Like I I will buy that. And that's what the 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 general pictures look like. I was like, why is this like Pirates of the Caribbean? Like is this like a like a gold and black? Like I don't know. I don't know. It seems seems weird. Okay. I'm going to do a giveaway. Then we're going to get into what I need to do today. All right, let's do this. Let's do a combination deal here. So the winner is going to get to pick out a bunch of things here. So one, the winner is going to get to pick out three ink samples and a postcard for me to send to you. And I'm going to send these out separately because I like sending the postcards through the mail. So I've been doing a bunch of postcards. If y'all saw my post on Monday, I reviewed these cards and I did another one this morning. So I'll do a bunch of these. So um, so we're going to do ink samples and a postcard. And I'll let y'all, you, you're going to have to pick all of the things that you that you win. So I'm going to pick a winner. All right, let's see. Give away. All right, hang on one second here. Ice box of happiness time. All right, let's do ink and postcards. All right, let's see here. All right, this giveaway is open! Exclamation point raffle. Anyone can enter, anyone can win. Um, so this was, my camera froze. Don't tell me we're gonna have problems again. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna reboot my desk camera while y'all do that. Yeah, I'm still with you, right? It looks like I'm still with you. It's just my camera being a fool. Hmm. All right, so we're gonna do this. All right, I'm still here, so I can deal with this. Oh. I... Oh 
Wow. That scene is dead. That's me doing that, so just hang tight. It really does not like this all of a sudden. <laughs> Yeah, I reconnected the USB. <clears throat> the camera's working, obviously. I can see the see it on the screen here. <laughs> Have Toby sit on it. It's always something, chat. Hmm. Toby, stop. All right, you're going to see double me here in just a second. All right, we can go without this. Okay, well, at least everything else is working. All right, so we're just going to have to go with this. Unplug the capture card. Yeah. So I've unplugged, I've rebooted um, everything. So we, we can ride without it today, I think. Ah, God, it would be nice if I had it, though, because I was going to do some pencil testing. I'll try one more thing here in just a second. All right. Okay. So let's pick a winner. And then you're going to have to work with me on picking out some favorites here. Uh, Toga. It's you. Toga wins. All right, Toga. We're going to have to do it this way. We're going to have to do it this way. Again, already, I know. And this is going to be cool because I'm going to send a postcard overseas, which is great. So can you see any of these numbers? You didn't know we started? We did. Rip. Link to your sample holder, please. Okay, I will. Uh, as soon as I put, the, as soon as I get my hands free. If my other camera worked, I could link to it now, but I'll get to it in a, in a second. All right, do you have any favorite numbers of these, Toga? And bingo, I know. All right, see you, Mike. I'm guessing you can see all these. 24, 38, and 3. All right. 24. Do you want to know what they are or you just want me to send them to you? Oh, yeah, because you can, you, can, uh, you can return one. Wait, did you win the inks last time? So I know you won. Really? That's crazy. All right. 24, 38, and 3. Okay. So. Man, I would love to show you this camera. Stupid. All right. So Mont Blanc Lucky Orange. That's number 24. Mont Blanc Lucky Orange. 38 is... Tono and Limbs Fukuoka, which is like a, a light pink. And number three is Amarillo, Amarillo uh, Pannonia Azul Frida. So do you want to keep all those? Wow. You're happy with that? Nice. Yeah, those are some good colors. All right. Got it, got it. Now, yeah, the bot really wants Toga to have some ink. 
Uh, so let me show you these postcards. I'm gonna send this separately because I like to send these through the mail. So this one, I apologize, the camera's not gonna be as good this angle. So this is Lamy All Star Fiery with Lamy Blue Black Ink. This one is Wearing Wool Heimdall. That one is some song lyrics to De La Soul Stakes is High for, um, this was my Jodo Rollerball. So this is Schmidt P8127. And this one I just did this morning um, with the Enigma Mystic Magic Magenta and Venta Marhar Lika. How does Heimdall compare to Fire and Fire? I'm gonna I'm gonna do a side by side. Um, when I look at this, so this one's for Toga. Toga, um, yeah. When you email me, I'll just get your shipping address from that and put it on here. So this one for Heimdall, boy, I really need my desk cam. This is the closest to Fire on Fire I've seen. So I want to compare them. So I will do that. All right. So I got Toga's stuff here. Um, let me do one more thing with the camera and, um, see what we got because, um, this will be frustrating for what else I want to do today. So hang on one second. All right, Toga, email me your stuff and then we'll go from there. So chat, as I'm going behind here, can you see me? Hi. Oh, that was bad. As I'm going behind the computer. If I lose y'all, just hang tight because this is what happened last time. Like I kicked the internet out or something. All right, so the camera's got its own capture card. Should be resetting. All right, are y'all still there? Did I lose you? We're still here? Yeah. <laughs> I was like planning for my eyes. I was like, whoops, that's a nose. Any Decky Betts memorials going on there and making? I'm sure. I mean, it's where the Almond Brothers Museum is, so I haven't seen anything, but I certainly. All right. So now let's see if the camera works. It still doesn't work. Wow. At this point, I am just perplexed. Oh, we got it. Wow. Oh, now we broke this one. Oh, double mic again. At least I know where that's at again. So I lost my main scene now. I am sorry, chat. This is embarrassing at this point so at least i knew how to fix the sound quicker you gotta be kidding me you have got to be kidding me I don't even know how this even happens. I have no idea. Hmm. 
This is mind blowing. So like, I, I guess I can put my face cam here. <sighs> Let me try one more thing, chat. Yeah, I lost my face cam. <laughs> yeah, I can just add a face cam to the scene, but the webcam, like, so like in that scene, yeah, let me just try this. All right, wish me luck. We are seriously playing with fire today, chat. This is ridiculous. <clears throat> so everything I touch <clears throat> is just screwed. All right, this is just stressing me out now at this point. Best stream ever, chat. <laughs> Thank you, Ash Ketchum. I don't know what I'm keeping up. I'm keeping up the craziness here. Just do a podcast. Okay, well, I guess this is what we're doing, chat. We'll just have to fix this scene later. All right. All right, so we have this. And we have this. Although this, for some reason, is really slow. Like, it's like laggy. So, we'll do, we'll, we'll re reconfigure things later. You're entertained? It's your first stream? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Oh, don't forget to link your sample bottle holder. That's what I started to do over here. Bum, 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 bum. <clears throat> all right, so this is all the stuff I needed, I did for um, making all the samples. All right, let me put these away. This is Toga's, this is Toga's. The stream is like Santa's sleigh, we all have to sing to keep it in air. You are not far off here. That old faster. Apologies chat, like I just, I got nothing. Like none of this should be happening. All right, so we need to put a stamp on here for Toga. We're into the boring international stamps now, and I don't like these as much. So I need to get, so I had, these are the international stamps I have now. I need to get the, uh, they have some new flower ones I need to get instead of those ones. Bring back the vile chrysanthemums. I just used up my last one recently. Okay, so let's look at some pencils here that Michael sent me. Do another giveaway that will fix it. All right. So let's see here. Uh, this, mm. 
link to sample holder it's in the there's there's a blog post up ahead just scroll up it says how i made 147 ink samples it's in there yes dens i am feeling back to normal hope you're doing well all right so we have some pencils here i need a good pencil paper we have a good pencil paper Handy, or do I need to bust something out? Let's see, what's a good pencil paper? Kakuyo business paper, that's probably pretty good. Penetic, I bought a Pepetto because of that post. My husband thinks I've lost my mind. Yeah, for sure. Like, I break that thing out, and it's like, what is happening? But you know what? It's kind of an amazing tool, isn't it? It's pretty wild. It's pretty wild. Okay, so my friend Michael, um, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Chad, anyone who read the post... Uh, that he made in Slack. This is something he found at his father's house? Maybe? Correct? I, I apologize. I didn't pull that up beforehand. From like a engineering or architecture type of work, maybe. I'm trying to remember this story. And he found this whole batch of pencils and said he was going to send me some. COVID for the first time? Jeez. Well, yeah, I hope you feel better soon. All right. I think there were his grandfather's. And it was some type of engineering or architecture, right? Here's the message he sent. Got these over Christmas. They belong to my grandfather back during his time as a planning engineer at McDonnell Douglas. Okay, 60s and 70s. There you go. Okay, so engineering, engineering pencils. And what's cool about these, like as I can already tell, so let's take these over here. Um, these have used a traditional sharpener. And it looks like on these he's used a lead pointer, like for the um, for the clutch pencils. But look how good a job he did sharpening these. I'm trying to get this in focus here, but you can tell the difference here, and how he sharpened these from the traditional from the traditional sharpener. That's really cool. So let's look at the types and grades here. Gate thief, thank you for the follow. Appreciate you. So we have a 2H Faber-Castell, so H on the hardness scale. So these are Faber-Castell 9000s, 2H, 3H. It's interesting how they have, so they have their whole, um, you know, markings on the front and then the grade. And then on the uh, two facets over, they have the, they have the grade again. And then two more facets. So if you have the pencil laid down, you can actually see. You know, if you're not, you don't have to flip it over to the main side to see. Not many companies do that anymore that I'm aware of, right? So every other facet has the grade on there. So if you're throwing it down and, you know, you have this stash of pencils here. So here's the H. You have this whole stash. Um, you can pick, you can pick it up easier. You're more likely to see the grade on there. I guess this is important back when you're using this, these types of pencils, like for this type of work and you want to have all these different grades available that you can just look over quickly and pick up, pick up the grade, which is pretty sick. Like no one really does that uh, anymore. So then here's a 4H. So this one actually has the grade on it too. I wonder why some of them have stars and some don't. So the 4H has like little stars or asterisks and then the H has them. But the 2 and 3 do not. I don't know what that means. And then this one is 
Carbo Weld Kimberly 2H. Nice uh, generals. Generals 2H. So they do the same thing too. Huh. So at, at the uh, during this time frame, that was a common thing. I guess because these were the tools of people, you know, doing their jobs, and it, that's a a um, ease of use type of thing, right? Hey, this makes my job easier if I have this whole stash and I don't have to line them all up perfectly. I have a better opportunity to to get what I need. Um, then this one, Dixon's El Dorado H, the master drawing pencil. So they did it too, except they did the full marking on every other facet. This is so interesting to me. All right, so let's grade sort them. We have H's, two H's, three H and four H. You're probably not going to be be able to see these very well on the um, uh, from the camera, but I will pick them up in just a second. I just want to get a feel for them. I really like the sharpening job that he did here. So that's H. Uh, that one's not sharpened. This is General's Kimberly. Wow. So this uh, Kimberly, this General's Kimberly, 2H. Feels almost softer than the Faber-Castell H. Maybe not. It's definitely darker. The Faber-Castell is definitely darker. And then we have the... Yeah, the Kimberleys are softer without question in the same grade. Maybe I just need to sharpen them equally. Generals tend to be hard. Hmm. So this one uh, com comparatively feels softer, but it doesn't have as sharp of a tip, so it could be tricking me, right? This is some artisanal sharpening. Then we have the 3H, a 9000 3H. This one feels great. That's super firm. Yeah, there's no industry standard. It's uh yeah, however the manufacturer wants to line them up in relation to their to their pencils. Just like we're talking about the um I, I really I'm it's this face cam is messing me up that I can't see myself. Um when we were talking about the black wings, the extra extra firm that black wing does is like an H. <laughs> you know, it's like around this grade. If that, it's like an HB. So like all of Blackwing's pencils are soft and dark. So going to extra, extra firm for Blackwing isn't like going to this uh, 4H. 3H is about where I would stop if I wanted just like a writing pencil. 4H is pretty challenging. So that's uh, in grade order from softest to firmest. And you can tell pretty clearly, even if you can't see the pictures that well, the difference in grades and darkness. So on the H side, the bigger the number, like the harder it's gonna get. And it's gonna get, it's gonna get to a pretty lightweight, firm line. So there's really there's honestly not much need for something past four H on the on the H side of the scale. You don't need an eight H, right? Like that there's not a lot of point to that. You're not gonna get a lot of benefit. But on the soft side, on the B side of the scale, like you're gonna get some difference between like a six B and a ten B, right? Those are those are more those have more variance 
um, then what you see here, 8H just gets into like nothingness. <laughs> Not a lot of point. Yeah, I think 4H is about the cap is about the cap of usefulness, right? You know, buy yourself an 8H, but there's gonna be not a lot of reason to use it. 8B, on the other hand, is gonna have a good anything on the B side of scale, you're gonna get some good variance all the way up through like 12. So that's kind of how I see it. Slumberland Slumberland that Slumberland Studio knows better than I do. I'm kind of talking out of turn. Uh and Slumberland Slum, Slumberland agrees. Um uh, with the general concept there. So yeah, it's like a logarithmic difference on the H side. I'm going to pretend, I'm going to say yes and pretend I know exactly what you mean. So yeah, uh, these are cool. I, I don't want to mess with the, um, like pointed sharpened ones, which is good on like the two H and the three H. I should probably, I should keep this 4-H out, though. It's kind of wild. I don't know. Like I said, that's probably the least useful. So, like, three. I would pick the three out of here to just have fun with. Like, I could write pages and pages with the three. It's not bad at all. So, that's very, very cool. Just realized someone could pick lead grade based on their normal writing pressure. Exactly. So like we could have the same, we could have a, um, you know, a, a, the same results from a few grades apart type of pencil, depending on how you, how you, how much pressure you have when writing. 4B is the one that surprised me the most when I tried some 4B pencils. I didn't think I would like a 4B pencil, but it turned out that that was a really useful type of pencil for me um, as someone who prefers the H side of the scale the 4B um, was really really good so I would use those on purpose so that's very cool all right thank you Michael for sending me these I am uh, I am really kind of fascinated where did I put the little sleeve oh it's out of my reach This is fun, y'all can't see me now, ha ha ha. It is. All right, I think it's time for another giveaway. Oops, put this back. We'll do another giveaway and then we're gonna open something else. Oh my gosh, I don't remember which thing to push now. All the buttons are in the wrong place, chat. So we're gonna save these. I should do a pencil giveaway. You want me to do a pencil giveaway of some kind? I don't know what I have. I need to look and see what I have. I should do a pencil giveaway that's related to this. And maybe I'll include one of these. Like, I don't want to give all these away because Michael gave them to me, but I'll, I'll we'll, we can put one in there um, for sure. We'll, we'll do that. Um, but let me see what else I have. More Wopex. You're going to get a Wopex regardless. Uh, some of the Wopex... Wop, Wop, Hi, are out in the wild now. Out in the wild. The Wopexes. What do we have for pencils here? Oh, here we go. This is more than pencils. This is a cool set. This is a gift set I got. Um, and it's the modern Faber Castell. So the Faber Castell grip. So this is like a gift set. Um I was confused why people hated those, but I think I get it now. Yeah, so Cool Pinguino got one. Wilpaces, yeah. Wilpex is great for cassette tape mechanisms. Ah, man, I knew I loved them for some reason. So we have a pen, a pencil, a highlighter, a pencil sharpener, and an eraser in this set. And then I'll throw in one of the Faber-Castell, whichever grade you want out of the Faber-Castell, H, 2H, 3H, or 4H. I'll send you one of those as well. So let's do this. And, of course, a woe pie. Yeah, so this was a gift set that I got from Goldspot, I believe, um, back earlier this year. 
All right, so this giveaway is open, exclamation point raffle. Anyone can enter, anyone can win. Yeah, they're kind of like the rubber pencils. They don't bend as much anymore, but yes, same concept. So this gift set, and then I'll let you pick out one of the one of the grades of the Fabric Castell that Michael sent me. Kim, you need to retype retype yours. There you go. Yeah, you, you got it. You saw the the typo. <clears throat> <laughs> I'm gonna mess with this while y'all are doing that. Not working. Oh well. Oh well. The pencils I hate the most are the ones with the plastic design on the outside. I have so many of those in the drawer from when the kids were little and got tons of them in every Valentine's Day. Yeah, so like it's almost like a wrap on the outside of the pencil. Sometimes like a foil wrap or something like that. So a little bit weird. Oh, and I'll send this pencil up. Uh, Jeez. I'll send this winner a postcard too. Because I already did some of these, so you need to pick one out. So I'll let you pick one of these out as well. But I'm not going to send it in the same package as the as the pencils. Um, because I like them to get um, posted. I like them to get destroyed in the mail. I think that's one of the features. I'm such a tease. I try. I try. All right, we got something cool next, chat. Something cool. That have not. Mail in Georgia is a dangerous thing these days. It's a nightmare. Complete nightmare. Mail in general. <clears throat> Um, yeah, so what we're going to open next, I have not seen in person, but I've seen a picture, so we're going to see. Office has lost way too many ongoing patches. Ish. All right, let's pick a winner of this stuff. Thorpe Cat. Thorpe Cat, you are the winner. Actually, Toga, I didn't write your name on this. Thorpe Cat. You win. Let me know when you're here. Yay. Oh, first time, really? That's amazing. I wasn't thinking that. I was thinking you had won before. Awesome. All right, so you have this. So I'm sending you this. So these pencil grades, I'll send you one of the vintage Faber-Castells. Do you have a grade preference? H, 2H, 3H, or 4H? So I need that from you. If you, uh, can you please? Yeah, I'm gonna show you the postcards next. <laughs> Surprise you, okay. So I'm gonna do, so we need not this one. So I'm gonna just gonna pick one. You know what, I'm, I am gonna cheat a little bit. I'm gonna give you one of the cool sharpened ones, whichever ones those are, whatever this one is. Okay, so that one you get. Um, okay, and then the postcard, so you're going to get that as well. Let me put this pencil in here. Okay. So the postcards, you can pick. Do you want a surprise on this too? Um, so you can pick the lyrics, the blue, the wide blue ink, or the fine blue ink. It's kind of like the differences. Or we could just do like uh, this. One, two, three. Lyrics. Got it. All right. Done. So fountain pen, these were the... Uh... 
So, Thorpe Cat, email me hello at pinnack.com with your shipping address. I'm going to send the postcard separate from the rest of this because that's the deal. Oh, so I need to put a stamp on that so I don't forget. Oh, Thorpe Cat, can I ask you, are you in the U.S. or are you outside of the U.S. before I put this stamp on here? I almost did it, chat. You don't have to give me your address, but if you can tell me you're in the U.S. or outside the U.S. so I can go ahead and stamp this while I have my stamps here. Okay, got it. So we can stamp that and we're good to go. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. All right, uh, fountain pen news. Did you want to see the postcards uh, more? Did you want to see anything about those? Uh, let me know, and I'll be glad to show you some more postcard action. You just want to copy my pattern? I have them all on Instagram. I've done a bunch of videos with them. Uh, excuse me. No videos with them. I've done some um, blog post ink reviews with them. But yeah, it's just this line pattern that I do. I don't know how to explain it. I just do it really fast. So this this one's funny. So this is that sheening ink, the Venta Mahar, Maharlika. And you can't help but get ink in just random places. Like, it's just something about these shimmer inks, man. They just get you. They just get on your fingers. They just jump. Look at this. Like you want to use them? Sometime can you do it live? Yeah, I do. I'll do one live here uh, at the end of the stream. I'll do one live. And um, yeah. Does the U.S. stamps do stamps with heads of state here? No, they do some like old, not current. They might do some old. Like, I just look at the stamp catalog, and it seemed like there was an old, uh, um, president one in there, but I can't remember, so. But, uh, usually not current. It'd be pretty historical. Okay. All right, let's do this here. So we've talked about how this year I want to do some more collaborations, right? Um, I got a sample of a thing I want to carry in the shop that I'm being sent a prototype of. Not a hat. I did see the John Lewis one. Like, I would totally order that one. That's what I was looking at. But there was some, there was, I don't know, it seemed like there was some other, oh, no one living on a stamp. That makes sense. So, I've been talking with Mark at Rickshaw about doing a pen addict stock uh, Sinclair. Can't wait for the pen addict Ebbets cap. I think I get my sample tomorrow, so maybe we can see. No, I think I get it today, so maybe tomorrow we can see it. Um. So I've been, I've been talking to Mark about what I wanted to do for the Pen Attic exclusive pen case. And I got my sample. So the one idea or the one bit of input I had was that I wanted a bit, I'm a, I'm a fabric person. Like I like using some different fabrics and, or some different feeling fabrics. You know, it, I, I love the standard Cordura's. I like the, it's not a brass sound yet, but that is the, let's just say we're talking about that. Like, I think we're going to get it done, but I don't have, I haven't even seen a picture of it yet. So, um, we're doing a Sinclair, but I like to do, since Mark has access to a lot of different fabrics, I wanted to do something, uh, interesting, like, you know, the ripstop, the sailcloths, uh, things like that. And there's a fabric called Dyneema, which is a lighter weight, crinkly kind of fabric. Um, and he found something that's Dyneema, but not as extreme as some of the stuff that I sent him. 
um, which is <laughs> which is going to work better on the case. Um, so we actually have a Dyneema exterior, and it looks like this. I how sick is that? Um, I am. <laughs> it's really good. I really like this one. How this one came out. <sighs> So, yeah, he found this uh, Dyneema um, with this uh, check pattern. Um, so, and then what's funny is, like, I only talked about the exterior and the colors. Obviously, I wanted orange. Um, and I was like, like, I knew what color I wanted for the interior. And he said, how about I put this color on the interior? Um, and it's exactly the color I wanted. So... Your, your mind's not going to be blown. It's basic, but it's correct. It's a light gray. So we can kind of do this two-tone gray on the interior. I think it's it just tight. See, Jackie gets it. Like, this is what should be in the interior, right? A light gray. So, like, I knew what I wanted, and he went ahead and made it before I even said what I wanted. So this is exactly correct. Um, and you get the two-tone of the... So this is the traditional Cordura uh, interior. So this is like the 400D uh, pack liner. Um, the light gray stuff like, so uh, let's put it under, put it under here. So yeah, there you go. Light gray, very stain prone. Definitely. So don't stain it. Staining's a feature. Purple would work too. True. Yeah. So we, so with the Sinclair, with all the Sinclairs he does, um, our deal is that the knock. Uh, we do the throwback knock logo here, even though the knock is no more. We do the uh, we do the throwback uh, on there, so that's like part of our deal. So yeah, so um, this is it. This is it. Really like that. Not wild about the plush lining. I like I I I kind of agree with that. Head full of ideas. Like I was just so used to not having the plush lining, it didn't move the needle for me right the plush lining didn't move the needle for me but i do like it um so i'm interested to see how he'll do the brass town because then it's more of a technical challenge with the brass town so for size size purposes but yeah like the uh i think the plush is additive in the end so but yeah, I used to, it used to not matter. I could take it or leave it kind of thing. I was never like solidly in one camp or the other. But in the end, I think it's beneficial. Now we need a pinatic patch to put on the Velcro on the outside. So we could do that later. Like we could end up doing um, a Velcro thing later. So yeah, I think it came out great. I, I don't know when we're going to do these yet. I haven't approved this yet, right? I just got it, literally just opened it in front of y'all. So obviously I haven't sent him an approval. <clears throat> but I wouldn't change anything with it. I think it's great. I think it's right on the money. So yeah, there we go. There we go. Panatic trucker hats. I'm doing a fancy hat first. I like trucker hats though. <laughs> Pro tip from non-binary. Stop calling it Velcro. It's hook and loop fastener. They're very litigious. We'll just play the video, the Velcro video. Um, I, I'm generally, I'm going to keep calling it Velcro. <laughs> and they can come after me. That would that would be good for my brand. Because we were notoriously anti-Velcro um, at Knock. One of Jeff's uh, biggest things. No Velcro on the cases and no violent fems on the radio. So those were the rules at Knock. If you could follow those two rules, uh, we all got along very well. <laughs> so yeah, so that looks like uh, that looks like it's gonna be the be the case. So I'm pretty happy with it. Like I don't think I'm gonna change a thing. Why no films? Uh, it's just personal taste. He hates them. So that's the rules. No Velcro on pin cases. No violent fems on the radio. Those are the rules. Like, those are Jeff's rules. Like, it's Jeff's world. I just lived in it. 
Like those are I can get behind those rules. I'm fine with that. <laughs> Thanks, non-binary. I would take the lawsuit. I would. Uh, I'm a big fan when people threaten to sue me, which rarely happens. But it's happened twice, and I've put them on blast both times. <laughs> All right, so there we go. Uh, thumbs up, yeah. Like, thumbs up. I definite thumbs up. Definite thumbs up. Oh, let's see. I should. I wonder if. Um, I wonder if we should do. Um, like a custom sticker with it. Maybe we should do that. Fire on fire on fire. I need to email Robert Oster about that. Hey, Panak, your little notebooks that you put out, what kind of paper is in them? The knock ones? Uh, fountain pen news, are we talking about those? Found my knock code note cards after misplacing them for many months. Would you be able to make it wearable in high vis? Uh, <laughs> one year I'll go as a pen case. Brad bundled with the case, the pen, and the bottle of ink. Yeah, yeah. I need to, I need to email Robert Roster. That needs to go on my list. So we need to. It's a. It's time for like ink reorder time. Uh, where are we at here? And then I'll ask the, uh, ask the other question. All right. I'll do a postcard here real quick and we'll give it away. <clears throat> Needs an option for a patch or a holder for the poker chip. That's pretty smart. Um, I'm just driving up the cost then. <laughs> I'll get one of those massive display pins. Yeah, a Halloween costume could probably just be like a giant Lamy Safari or something, right? Okay, sorry, I'm looking around my desk here, seeing what I need to do. All right, if I do a postcard right now, and we'll give it away when I'm done, or you can pick one of the ones I've already done. Um, let's come up with some questions from for Glyph. Um, I only have, <laughs> I don't have two days to record this, but if you got questions, far away. I don't know if I'm going to get to them all. Because I don't run these too long. All right, what type of, do we want to do a fountain pen, a pencil, a ballpoint, a gel, a roller ball? Do we have any preference here? Should I pick a winner and then let them choose what pen? Maybe I should do that. So these, um, so I love these cards. These have been really good. Um, but the words on them are really funny. Huge cloudy symbols of a high romance. It's like, what does that even mean? Till love and fame to nothingness do sink. Hey, Scarlet. I love you, Luna. I love you, Scarlet. Hope you're doing well. Hope y'all are having fun. Where are the songs of spring? I, where are they? Think not of them. Thou hast thy music too. While barred clouds bloom the soft dying day. It's like, what is this AI? I'm pretty sure this is AI. Yeah, it's totally AI. All right, let's pick a winner, and then the winner can pick um, what pen we're going to uh, use. I am going to do lines, not lyrics. So we'll do a line art because Fountain Pen News wants to see me do a line art, which I can do. Let's see, postcard. All right, if you want me to draw you a postcard and mail it to you, enter to win. Exclamation point raffle. Anyone can enter, anyone can win. I, sh I will send it worldwide for sure. For sure, chat. Mm -mm -mm -mm. 
All right, here's kind of, let me get kind of what we have inked up here. So here's kind of the fountain pen inked up. I've already used the pink one. So I've done one with this one with this one. I mean, I'll do them again if that's what you want. I've done one with this one that's, this is the fiery, this is the magenta one. Um, we have all those. We have, I don't know, we have all kinds of ballpoint pens and pencils over here too. Those lines are from a Keats poem. All of them or just, or like a specific one? <laughs> the romantics were AI. Oh, I have dark lilac in this bear. I am gonna clean this out though. I'm not jamming with dark lilac, but we can use it. It'd probably be good on a card on this white bear. Yes, exclamation point raffle. Um, Fountain Pen News wanted to see me do a um, line art card, so I'm giving give one of those away. And the person who wins get to pick gets to pick what pen I use. <laughs> Trying to see what other fun options there are. Sheen on that Venta ink is nuts. Yeah, it's gonna make me clean it out. <laughs> it's gonna make me clean it out quicker. Cause like, look at it. It just every time I touch the card, it just gets places. This is why I don't like heavy sheeners, despite how awesome they look. Look at that. It's so cool. But like physically, like it just gets on my hands and stuff. I like saying fountain pen news. All right, injuries have stopped. Injuries have stopped. Is Heimdall versus Fire and Fire comparison in the cards today? I don't have Fire and Fire handy, but let's do that tomorrow. Um, we will do that this week. Is that okay, Dot Mackey? Even though I, you may not be present. <laughs> because I need to go after this anyway. But we will 100% do it because I need to do it um, myself. All right, let's pick a winner. Color maker. Color maker, you are the winner. I don't know if there's a postcard you want to pick out. I mean, they're all not super different, but you can if there's one that like seems like interesting. Like I don't, I don't even know how you would choose. Nice color maker. So do you want to pick out a particular card? So card, do you, do you want me to pick out the card? Do you want to pick out a card? Heck, I could do it some my other postcards too if you want me to get out some more to look at. And then you can pick like any of the fountain pens. Um, these I've already done. Uh, actually, these two, this one, but I'd do them again. Let's see the four ones from the left. I'm assuming you mean the cards. That's a pretty good batch. So one, two, three, four. From left to right, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Four. Got it. All right. How about a pen? Do you want uh Yeah, I like doing this fountain pen news. I do this on stream pretty frequently, so it was definitely in the cards. 
Um, so we have some fountain pens here. Any orange inks in the pens. So I have Heimdall in this one. Um, that is all the orange ink. So we can do this one. And it's got a stub. It's like uh, this one. So it would look like that, which we can do. I know, I know, I caught myself. So we can do that. That would look, I mean, that's probably about the best looking choice. So you good with that? All right, let's do it. Let's do it. So, oh, color maker. Last question. Are you in the U.S. or international? I'm wondering, given the spell of Kalur, Heimdall so light for me. Uh, I was using a stub nib. And the, when I reviewed it, I used the, the same stub nib. So I just want to put the stamp on Color Maker. 10 minutes drive from Heimdall in Norway. Nice. All right, so let me... Let me get the appropriate stamp. I don't know if there's a cheaper international postcard stamp, but I all I have is the regular international letter stamps that I use. Uh, how should we do this? Should we do it like this? And I might be like breaking some kind of rules on like how I do the um um. address on here but I don't know I haven't had a problem yet so I am going to leave a little bit extra room for international though so I do go ahead and block off my card so I don't accidentally I, I risked it with this one which I don't feel comfortable leaving that smallest space again so we're going to go ahead and do this So I just kind of create my own lines for that reason. All right, Fountain Pen News, you ready? This is how we do it. It's really pretty simple. You're not breaking any rules on the same letter stamp as for postcards too? No other international stamp? Okay, gotcha. That's what I had been using. I didn't know if there was another option. <laughs> Desmat. Oh, so Desmat. So if you go to... Um, Mint Lodica, I think they're just, they think they just dropped a new series. It's just one stamp for international. Gotcha. All right, so this is all we do here. So it's really more of just like a fast paced meditative thing for me. There's no rhyme or reason uh, to what I do. The only rule is that the lines have to connect, right? There's no floating lines out there. Right? Kind of like a reverse maze type of thing. Like, you can always get from one point of the card to the other one. Somehow. So you can see with Heimdall, kind of like what Mike was saying. So since I hadn't used this pen today, the ink is built up right here. You can tell it's darker. Or I can show you all later. Um... And then as it's flowing, it gets into this lighter state. But then it kind of, it pretty much stays the same from here. So it's really, I just fill in the spaces however I think it feels right. And that's about it. There's no huge rhyme or reason to it. And obviously, this is a wider nib pen. You can get, like, you know, they're finer with this, right? So that's a finer, that's a finer, that's an extra fine Lamy nib, and this is a 1.1 stub nib. So you get a little bit different, different characteristics in the output because of the shape.
and I use the blotting paper because I don't like my hand oils on the page. Or in this case, the note card. So I'll just sit here and do this in my notebooks or cards or whatever. I don't know. I just like doing it. <clears throat> yeah. Have I done Have I done an architect nib one? I can't remember. I don't have an architect nib inked up. I'm about to, I'm going to have to clean some fountain pens soon. I should ink up an architect nib. I have several inks I want to try that I haven't been trying. So maybe I'll pick one for architect. Maybe ink up my Scogsy Micarta. So I will check for a little bit of a repetitive pattern. Sometimes I can leave a gap in these, like a line, like a through line, which I don't really like. <laughs> I think I might need a mint lodicum moon phase desk mat. I'm gonna go look at them um, sometime today. I, I saved the link so I could go look. And then I do have to be careful. I do leave a space for um, the pen and ink that I use down here. <clears throat> oh, Mafia Geek, I really enjoyed doing that. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed that. And uh, actually, if you go look at the Heimdall post, uh, I think, well, is it Jonathan? Jonathan replied in there. It was really funny. So they were a podcast listener too, but I, I'm glad you said that. I appreciate that. But like some streams, I might just like pop on and just do this the whole time because I, I like doing it. <laughs> So like one of my ink testing notebooks is just filled with, with these. So when I get close to the end, I go ahead and uh, fill in the uh, bottom with the details. And then uh, I'll, I'll fill in the, the remaining spots here. So I just usually put the pen type and the ink. <laughs> Yeah, Mafia Geek, for sure. Hey, thank you, Craig. Did you get your Kaveco Sport yet? I haven't gotten mine yet. So the ink the other person had was Dorothy. So, the because I asked, I was like, oh, I wonder which one it was. So they replied that it was Dorothy and yours is the mind. I think Kimberly might have the mind. I can't remember. Uh... 
<clears throat> so yeah, it's like it was a good uh, topic to discuss, right? Because it, it, it's something we deal with all the time, but we never really like kind of lay it out there. It's like, hey, by the way, just because you think something's the greatest thing in the world uh, doesn't mean it works for everybody. And it's something as a reviewer, like I try to keep in mind as well. Okay, so we do that. Chechi Tobaldo, thank you for the follow. Appreciate you. I hope I said that right. Like how some people like the, like the Wopex, right? The mind isn't on her FPC. It seems like that one passed through my hands at some point, but I can't remember. So what I do after this, um, so I'll do like the main color of what I'm going to do. Right? I'll always uh, mix in just some kind of alternate color dot in there just because, I don't know, it feels right. They don't necessarily mean anything. Um, so let's do... I don't really have a lot of wild colors here. All the purples I have are really dark. They'll look black on here. I have brown. That's dark. Trying to think if I have something interesting. Uh, does this blue work? The uh, the Wopex. Wopex. It's a pencil. Um, you know, aside from streaming, what does your day look like? We can talk about that. Let's use this blue-black. I'm accused. Does the pattern making like that have special special significance? Zero. It's just something I do naturally. It's my natural uh, doodle. So it's quick and efficient and fun for me. It's meditative more than anything. God, that's just going to look black too. I'm trying to find like a non-black looking ink on these small dots, and I don't think I can. All right. We'll do Bilberry. Um, so yeah, these are the other ones I've done. I don't know. It's just something I like to do. So we're going to do Diamine Bilberry. And it's going to be pretty much... Been pretty disappointed with re wearing a resurrection and loss. But the rest I've used have been pretty good. I think adding Shimmer Potion made those two more usable. Interesting. And I always... For some reason, I... There's no rhyme or reason to this. But I generally do like six dots. But... That's just because I want to balance. I don't want too many. So this is actually like a blurple, but it's just going to look black on this card, I'm pretty sure. And I just kind of space them wherever I want. I don't care. And I'll do small dots and big dots. And none of it matters. It's just whatevs. Sometimes in the big spaces, I do small dots, and sometimes in the small spaces, I do big dots. And sometimes I do five or seven dots, because I can't count. And that's it. That's how I do it. <sighs> That's how we that's how we test inks. That's how we doodle. All right. So color maker. Make sure you email me your address and I'll put this in the mail for you. All right. So that's the the final version. So I love doing these. Like I could sit here for hours and do this. Like one of the day I threaten to do this, but I, I get too distracted. So And you can see how, again, here's the ink thing. Like when you use a pen that you, like I hadn't used this pen since yesterday, right? It always like kind of like gets all, this is all the ink being heavy in the feed and then using the pen, it stays consistently. Even, you can't really see it on this one, but like even the Lamy, this is Lamy blue black. You can tell these first lines are dark and by the time I get done, they're much lighter. So that's just, that's a fountain pen thing, chat. All right. 
Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Hey, we're back. All right. What do we think? Is that a wrap today, chat? I think that's a wrap today. Let's see who's streaming. Let's see who's streaming. Carrie Tissa. I haven't seen Carrie in a while. Let's see that. We'll see that. Whoops, wrong click, wrong click. Um, yeah, oh, you're going to the Yoseka Stationery Fest? Oh, uh, who asked what my date looks like? Uh, Omaha Dad Games. You know, aside from streaming, what does your day look like? That's a good question. So, I'll do a little quick, quick thing. Um, the morning is, uh, recommend some Jennifer Egan books if you haven't read. Let me write that down. So the morning looks like um, finishing any post for the day. Um, they're usually they're usually all written and done. Um, so like my first few hours usually start about eight. Oh yeah, we can talk about Carrie too. That reminds me. Um, so yeah, maybe we're not done yet. So my morning's usually emails, finishing, posting, editing, getting blog posts up, right? Because I try to post them at nine. I'm not all, uh, I'm not all super dialed to the schedule, but I try to keep it pretty consistent every day at nine o'clock for the days that get posted at nine o'clock except Sunday. Um, so I just make sure that's all dialed in. Sometimes I have to finish editing. Sometimes I have to edit the pictures, whatever. They're usually all the posts are written. All the writers have them in, in time. Um, then I check the emails, make sure what I do. Need to get, make sure there's no emergency things and emails I need to handle. Then I kind of make my little, day, look at my little daily list. I was like, okay, these are the things I need to do for the rest of the day. Tomorrow, like, is today a shipping day, right? I don't ship every day. So... Um, you know, like Monday and Thursday afternoon, say, you know, we'll block a couple hours out for shipping. <clears throat> then by the afternoon comes around, like after, say, like after stream, um, that's when like the future planning will happen, like for tomorrow, like, you know, I need to write the podcast, right? That'll happen this afternoon. Um, you know, if there's members content I need to create, that'll happen in the afternoon. Um, Friday is dedicated to newsletter writing day because that takes a long time. So Friday, I don't book anything except um, to write refill for the members newsletter because that'll take me a good like four to six hours to put together. So that's every Friday. Um, Saturday, I don't really work um, other than post the giveaway winner. Sunday, I post Miss Phil and usually like I'm finalizing my review for Monday, right? Since I put I, my, my due date is Monday for my reviews. I'm usually finishing that up Sunday. Sunday I'll do, it's also an extra shipping day if we have a ton of orders uh, for spoke design, things like that. So afternoon, is uh, mornings are a lot of businessing. Afternoons are a lot of planning for the following day or the following week. And that's kind of about it. Like I could break it down even further if we needed to, but um, that's in general, like, my blocks of time, how they're set. So like this afternoon, I'll be sitting and like writing the show for tomorrow, um, thinking about what other um, like reviews upcoming that I need to start working on if I haven't already. So things like that. So that's it in general. Um, today, I'll try to fix the stream uh, cameras because those are broken. So there you go. Um, so Kerry posted his news. Uh, did he post it on the Fountain Pen Day feed? So he's going to work for Trufe, which is a stationery shop in Greenville, South Carolina. Um, I think he's starting at the end of this month or the beginning of May. So um, he's leaving Kenrose, no longer working for them. He's going to work for Trufe. He's going to be part of the business uh, with Chris and uh, Chris's wife um, and the rest of the team at Trufe. He's going to be a lot of the as the best as I can tell a lot of the, the forward facing stuff, like going out to pin shows, um, you know, being out in front of like the true fame marketing, uh, around products. And he is super excited and 
he should be. He was at Kenro forever. <clears throat> the notebooks were the Penanic members ones. So those were write pads. So I don't know the paper that's in those. And it's a very good paper. <laughs> when you say businessing, I think a kitty from the Lego movie. So I talk about Lord Business all the time. So that's when I'm actually talking about businessing. I'm actually thinking about that a lot. So yeah. Um, so yeah, he was at Ken Kenro. I don't know if he was there for a decade, but it was a pretty long time. Um, I'm sure it's a big loss for them. Like, I mean, I'm friends with all those guys at Kenro and they, uh, they have a good thing going there. So Carrie was instrumental in a lot of things at Kenro recently in the past, uh, past, uh, time frame, uh, including, um, um, like with Estherbrook, he was, he was one of the core, uh, core, uh, people behind getting the Estherbrook line going there. So, um, he's leaving on good terms. Like, he could not have stressed that enough that it was just like a really good, really great, great time. And this is just a good opportunity from the, for him to, he's moving to Greenville, right? Like he's lived in New York his whole life. Um, and you can expect that Michael, uh, that he's pretty ubiquitous at pin shows. Now he'll be pretty ubiquitous with true Fay. So they're going to get out a lot more. I've actually asked them in the past. I've asked Chris in the past, like, like Chris didn't even, wouldn't even didn't even make it to the Atlanta show every year, which I understand. Um, so I think this is a great opportunity for both. I think it's really smart for Trufe. Um, obviously, it's a great carries a great person and a great voice in this community. Um, Greenville, South Carolina, is a cool town. It is a highly progressive like technology town like that's where they built one of the bmw factories so like it's this town that's like very like on the on the leading edge um it's not an old sleepy southern town like it's a it's a very modern all mod cons type of town in in the middle of south carolina it's only three hours from me so i anticipate i will be up there before too long i mean nothing planned but like i'm gonna go up there and see uh it's the austin of south carolina that's a good way to put it yeah, it's a great town. I could live in Greenville. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so pretty cool. Like, I think this is only positive in, like, the most extreme positivity kind of ways. Like, I'm pretty stoked to see what they're going to do. So they're really, really cool. Who's taking his place at Kenro? That I have no clue. Like, I really don't know. Um, yeah, I got nothing. I haven't talked to uh, Brian or Ryan yet. Um, was waiting till this was official because I'll still obviously have working relationship with them uh, to a degree uh, to whatever I've had before. <clears throat> They've done some sponsorship stuff here and there. Um, definitely done some, uh, um, you know, different reviews and things like that. So I'm sure that'll continue. I, I was working with them before Carrie was there. I'm sure I'll still work with them, you know, when Carrie's gone. So which he is now. So yeah, it's happening uh, pretty quickly. So. There we go. I think it's super positive and super cool. So good stuff. Good stuff. So yeah, I got to spend some time with Carrie at the Atlanta Pen Show talking about it. And he's so excited. Um, it's been in the works for a little bit. Um, so much so that he already <laughs> he'd already found a place and, and was already renting a place in South Carolina uh, just to get everything going. So it's really cool. So he's excited. I'm sure he's going to jump in with both feet and I'm sure we'll be seeing and hearing a lot from them, um, in the very, very, very near future. So it's cool to see. It's cool to see. Yes. I like it when, uh, good things happen to good people. And this seems like one of those, one of those times. So all right, so let's do a raid. Let's go hang out with Kiri. Uh, I don't know what they're making today. All I know, my wife is cooking something in the, and it smells amazing, so I'm going to go figure out what that is. Oh, she's, I, as I said that, she literally brought it in here. She's made, uh, she's made fish tacos uh, and, and black beans here, so you can't really see, like, all the details. But, like, I wasn't kidding when I said I smelled something, and she, like, walked in the door. So I was like, yeah, I'm going to go do that, chat. So I love you, but uh, I love her more, so I, I better get my butt in the kitchen if, if I want some of that. Um, <laughs> uh, that, 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 let's not, let's not clip that chat. That'd be okay if we didn't do that. So that'd be cool. 